What's up guys, Shane here from Tech 3D Printing. Easter's coming up, so you know what we're gonna do, an Easter special, let me show you what to print. Welcome back guys, so my hair's a little different, the beard is longer, it's been a little while since I've recorded a video, but I have been doing printing, and what I've been doing lately is printing out some things for Easter. There's been a lot of things that I've seen on Thingiverse for quite a while that I've been wanting to print. I just haven't done it. Uh, I either didn't have the colors that I wanted or just, just didn't have the time. But since I kind of put everything on break for quite a while, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to get to it. And the wife was really thrilled about this one too. So I have some different prints here that you can do. Some I've shown in other videos before, and it's kind of just kind of a collection of them. But there are some definitely some new ones, including some of these eggs. Let me get them all out and we'll get started. So first I'm going to start with a very simple candy dish that's kind of like a broken shell, kind of like a broken egg, kind of, you know, obviously it's Easter, a lot of things are eggs, most everything I have is egg related, uh, but this one I actually kind of liked as a very simple little, you know, candy dish. This is printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III using some random uh, white PLA that I previously used, I don't even remember what the brand it is up in there, I think it might be the Fugatech one, uh, very similar to Fugatech, but it's not my brand of filament, uh, but it's just like a white that I I picked up it was like 10 bucks when I bought it. There is just a tiny bit of stringing on this, but overall it came out pretty good. And underneath there's just a pretty serious overhang under here. So that was kind of a little bit uh, disappointing. But again, you're looking at it from the top and it looks like, you know, a regular old bowl. Not too bad. So if you search eggs on Thingiverse or 3D printed eggs, whatever you want to search on there that's egg related, the very first thing is going to be a collection of a bunch of different eggs. Uh, they have a wavy one, so it's a low poly one. Uh, isometric was one of them. Uh, this, uh, this is the wavy one here. There's just so many different eggs that you'll see, and it, it, they're actually pretty cool little eggs. Uh, this is the Ventrelli one, which is you know kind of like uh, how uh, what's the skull was that way? I forget exactly what that's called. But there's just a whole bunch of different eggs that you can print. I think there's about 12 of them, or 10 or 12 in that collection. And they're all pretty interesting to print. I printed these on a bunch of different printers. Uh, one was printed on the Monoprice uh, i3, so not the Select Mini, but just their tiny little i3 that they have, the i3 Mini. I printed on the Ender 3, and I printed down on my GTEC A10. Uh, I got that working again. So they all came out pretty good detail. Details. Nothing really to complain about. A little bit of stringing here on the wavy one. Now these were all printed with AIO Robotics Silk Filament, which I personally just love that stuff. It prints really, really well. I only print it a little bit hotter, which ends up having a little bit of the stringing, so you kind of have to really dial in your retraction settings on that. Maybe go like a half millimeter extra on your retraction for using that filament. That's essentially that's the silk, the regular PLA, don't have problems with. But the silk kind of gets that way a little bit. And yeah, I mean, these are all very cool. I actually ended up printing, uh, this one is almost uh, hollow inside as I printed it with maybe 4% infill, 5% infill. I mean, it weighs almost nothing with two perimeters. So that was pretty interesting. And the top details on these came out really, really good as well. So I was very happy with them. Now, keeping with the eggs, uh, we do have like another, ooh, like the like Ventrilli style one, or I can't remember what the name of this one is, but basically it's just like the wireframe, we'll call it a wireframe egg. Uh, there was this little wireframe egg, which was kind of remixed, and they just went ahead and added two little chick feet to the bottom of it. And it turns out to be this super cute little, you know, wireframe egg with little feet on it. So yeah, that one was pretty cool. And then uh, also, you know, bunnies. There's no uh, Easter without a bunny, it's Easter bunny. So I printed out two little ones and I did try printing this out really big on my HE3D, uh, the giant Delta that I have here. And sadly, I was using some older Makers Geeks filament. I figured I would give it a shot, try to use it. It jammed. I don't know if it was necessarily the printer, but it was going really solid for the first while, then it failed. Uh, sadly, I didn't save the print, but I only got about uh, so far, I probably about like four inches of it printed. It was going to be almost two feet tall. It was gonna be this huge bunny, but I did get a couple of the little ones printed. Uh, this one is using, oh, this purple was by, oh, this is um, Rhino, 3D's uh, Rhino Reel. So it's the Rhino Reel Purple, and this is another AO Robotics little blue. So the details are there. These are both printed on the Prusa i3 Mark III. 
uh, and it you know it came out great you know this the blue is just so silky and shiny i did have a little bit of stringing on the top of the purple it's really hard to see with the dark background and it, it kind of started to you know just string just a little bit up there but this blue was just fantastic this was printed at 0 0.5 millimeter layer heights on the mark III, and again it just kind of tore it up just did it really nice and easy long print though at such a fine layer height but overall a really good prints so these eggs are probably my favorite and i have quite a few printed here what two four six eight of them printed all different and they are surprise eggs now what's in them exactly it's pretty sweet. Now my son's gonna like this because he's a classic boy. I don't know how it happened, but he's a classic boy. He loves his cars, his trucks, his airplanes, anything like that. Some of these are a little hard to open up. Uh, that is the one thing I have with these is it's a little hard, but there is a little notch there to put a screwdriver and open it up. But once you get into there and you open it up, you have a little construction vehicle. Now this one is big. This is at 200%. It's a little bit bigger, but it just fits in there just perfectly like so. But it's fully functional. Let me get that focus here. So it's fully functional. The wheels spin, the forklift goes up and down. Like I said, and it just fits just perfectly into this egg, like so, and then snap shut. And here's that little slit I was talking about. You kind of get a screwdriver there, you can pop them open, uh, but they print just like that. And you print the, uh, the actual construction vehicles, all print in place as well. All the, everything is, is print in place. So the wheels, you just have to break those free a little bit and you just gotta exercise this part. But let's take a look at some of the other ones. All right, so here's another, here's one of the ones. So this is the regular 100% scale. And here we have a little excavator in here. And it moves up and down like so. Wheels spin and it articulates. This way, again, it's super tiny. Look at it on my hand. Super duper tiny little print. It fits just in there like so. Snap shut. And this one, we have a little backhoe that's in there. That comes out. Articulating arms, which move very well. This entire bottom piece spins. The wheels spin. I mean, these models are excellent. I mean, these are super duper. I mean, well-tuned models that are made for 3D printing, and I'm super glad to see these because, again, my son is just obsessed with them. Uh, here's a little dump truck one. Uh, here, here's the regular 100% size of the forklift. Uh, the one that I had printed uh, earlier I showed you was 200% in size. And this one I didn't quite finish because this one was really hard to actually print. And this is a uh, like a cargo truck for cars. So it can hold three little cars in there and they do have the models for them. This is printed on the uh, i3 Mark III, but it, the back is completely sealed. I mean, everything just, I was way too squished the bed. This really takes some fine tuning to get this specific model to print properly, at least in my opinion. Others might not feel the same, but I feel like this model really needs to be tuned to where your printer and know your settings really well. One last, last one. Oh yeah, here's the fire truck one. He was super excited about this one. I printed the fire truck already once for him to have, but it broke. I did have a little bit of under extrusion on the ladder. It's a little hard to see in there. Uh, this was actually printed with the uh, Coex Red PETG that I'm reviewing right now. Uh, it just looked like a good red. It's just what I had kind of sitting around on a printer. Uh, that was actually printed on my Hypercube. So all the eggs are printed at once on the Prusa i3 Mark III. I did start printing it on the TiVo Tornado, but I had a little bit of problems with that. Um, it just, it wasn't getting enough detail, and especially on these hinges, as these all, again, they print in place just like so. So I wanted to just put everything on the Mark III. It took longer, because that actually printed a little bit slower than what I could do on the Tornado at this uh, size. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, I've got I got two more big ones. So these one, so this forklift one uh, was in the files as 200%. It's still you can hear it. This is one that I sized up to 200%, and you can you can really hear it. Uh, so here we have the excavator, but really big, or the backhoe, I should say. You know, again, because I sized it up, it's like super duper flimsy here. It's not really optimized uh, well at all. And I did have a part right here fail. Not a huge deal, not a deal breaker. It still functions perfectly. And a, you know, three-year-old is not gonna care. Well, he's, he's still, well, he's three, yeah, he's three right now. And then the last one here, 
It's a surprise to me because I don't remember. Ah, oh, the backhoe. So again, all the wheels turn, the, the actual the lifter, the bed kicks up, but they do have a fair bit of wiggle in them because of just sizing it up and it doesn't actually size it perfectly. But again, prints flat, like so, or I should say, just like this. You know, so this is the bottom of the bed. I mean, it's they're really, really cool to print. And these would be really awesome to put if you've got a little one that likes some construction vehicles or cars. There's there's one that's a jet. He wasn't really a fan of the jet. Uh, or not a fan of planes very much. Uh, he likes the movie planes, but the jet was a little much. Uh, so I kind of kept it to the construction vehicles. Fire trucks is big for him. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and scatter these around the house so that he can find them when we do our Easter egg hunt Easter morning. And again, these eggs here, super cool for either decorations or put them out, let the kids find them. They can go in Easter baskets, something like that. Again, I know Easter's not big for everyone, uh, but my kids really like doing the Easter egg hunts and they all have their own baskets. Uh, Sarah's candy is really big where I'm from, so that's kind of, that's the chocolate that we normally put in there. So again, we have fun with it. Uh, it's a good family tradition that we have, and this kind of brings a little bit of 3D printing into that holiday. So yeah, I mean, again, any of these are printable on any 3D printer you have. Uh, again, on my Prusa i3 Mark III is a standard 200 by 200, what was it, 200 by 250 millimeter bed. All of these fit on a standard 200 by 200 printer, which most have, and you can even do all these on even a smaller printer, like the Select Mini or just the i3 Mini from Monoprice. Again, they all fit. You can just print these one at a time. It's a little slower on those printers. These are all PLA based, so very simple to print. They don't need a whole lot of cooling. There's not a ton of overhangs on any of them. Maybe this egg is a little more difficult. This one's actually printed on the Anycubic i3 Mega. And because I went from PETG to PLA, there's a little bit of bleed over and it just, uh, they broke. They don't, PETG and PLA don't really bond very well together. So I use a little bit of super glue to glue those back on. It was an easy fix. Oh, what else? I think that's it. So again, I use lots of different filaments here, lots of different printers. So again, you can do this on almost anything you have at home. I recommend uh, maybe trying it out. If you want to check out any of the filaments that I use or any of the printers that I use, I'll put some links down below in the description. You can check those out. Most of them are Amazon. They are all affiliate links. So anything you buy through those helps me out here on the channel. And I greatly appreciate your support on that. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, you know, Easter 2019 special video. I will have lots more videos coming up in the very near future. So stay tuned for that. And if you want to ensure that you don't miss any of them, hit the subscribe button. Consider becoming a patron. Help me out on a monthly basis to do what it is that I do, buy the filaments and things like that. Get access to my Patreon feed, after show, things like that. Again, there's also other ways you can purchase things, either affiliate links, or there's discount codes down below. Aero Robotics, I have discount code for them. Ziltec filament, there's one down there for that as well. Check all those out. I appreciate anything you guys do, even if it's just to hang out with me and watch these videos. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, happy printing.